Greetings and welcome, friends. It's great to have you here, me and my fellow geometricians. We're just talking about, like, segments and lines and rays and, and things of that sort. Uh, and actually, I, I don't know, are we... Yeah, I think we're, we're talking about that. What did we do yesterday? Something. Measuring and constructing segments, except we didn't do so much of the constructing part. But we're going to try to get better at that. Uh, so let's see, explain how these two things are different. Uh, yeah, what are, what are your guys' thoughts? Anyone? Yeah. Okay, so this represents a distance. You know what I just realized? I'm writing on a background layer. That is not helpful. Go. Go. And this is like completely breaking the fourth wall on the first episode. Uh, so X, Y, uh, it represents a distance. Nope. Represents a distance. What else is true about that? Maybe someone wrote something different. What does that distance look like? What, it, what is that thing going to be? Oh, wow. Man, I was just going to say number, but numerical value. Oh, right, right, right. They gave you the multiple choice on the on. I was like, numerical value? What? Uh, so, so, yeah, X, Y is that. Uh, what about X, Y with this thing on it? What's that mean? It's a, a line segment. So would it be appropriate to describe that with a number? No, because it's like a geometric object, right? It's a figure, it, it, a drawing, an image of sorts. Uh, so yeah, so I can't represent that with a number. I could talk about the, the length of a line segment or the measure of it or the midpoint of a line segment, all of these different things. But, but yeah, so this is like a figure. This is a number. That's good enough. I, what they said some other cool stuff too on that too. What did they say? I don't remember. Doesn't matter. We're good. Wow. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. I wouldn't have written that like on an open ended, but on a list. Or okay. So let's see. Uh, looking at these, let's graph a. Uh, so starting at the origin, I'd go left four, up five. There is alpha there. B, and I know that I'm going to be making a segment A B here. So I'm going to graph that in blue as well. So left for uh, up eight go for Bravo and uh, I'm gonna have a segment here so it looks something like that and let's see un otro color uh, actually that's not Spanish is it how do you say color in Spanish Isn't color like hot I don't remember don't worry add it in the comments below fine uh, two negative three here's Charlie and D is over two up down zero delta. Uh, so if I want to figure out whether or not these are congruent, what do I have to show is true between the They're the same length, so if I can show that their lengths or their measures are equal, then by definition of congruent line segments, they'll be congruent. So uh, if I want to find the length between those two things, uh, what's one way I could do that? I guess in this case, just count it. Uh, that's that's three, and this one also happens to be to be unit, which is convenient when those are vertically or horizontally oriented. But if it's diagonal, you've got a little bit more work to do. Perhaps you guys are aware of that. Yeah, uh, I also because they're vertically oriented. One of the ways you could do it is I could find a b by uh, taking the absolute value of the difference. And notice that of their coordinates, these, these negative fours are the same. So I actually don't even care about those. So I could just actually take their, their y coordinates since they were vertically. 8 minus 5 uh, is going to abs 3, which is. Uh, and then, yeah, similar thing for that. So since uh, a, b equals 3 and c, d equals 3. Then I could say that A, B equals C, D. You didn't have to write all this. And since their measures are equal, I could now transition to saying that the segments themselves are congruent. There's that awesome, like, equal sign with the toupee, uh, the congruent symbol right there. All right, attending to precision. I think I saw that uh, on the data that came in. I think we made some errors on this, possibly. So I'm interested to see what happened. Uh, but it says the diagram shows an insect called a walking stick. Uh, use 
Kepler to estimate the length of the abdomen, okay? Uh, they've got like a ruler here, so I'm guessing I'm that one. Uh, and I think they say to the nearest quarter inch, okay? Uh, and then how much longer is the walking sticks? Oh, there. did I skip a part? Oh, and the length of the foot. Both of them. All right, so for abdomen, uh, I could take the coordinates. Now, this appears to be uh, two and a quarter. I'll round up for that. I'm going to take the absolute value of 2.25 minus, uh, that looks like zero. Do you guys agree? All right. So that's just going to equal 2.25 when I simplify, and that's measured in inches. Okay. Uh, and then for the thorax, T, uh, what do you guys want to call that? Looks like it's closer to the four. So I'll just call that straight up four. Uh, and this is still at 2.25. And so I subtract those things. What do I get? 1.75. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then what do they want? How much longer? Oh, wow. Okay. So the so longer, that's just going to be subtract them. Right? And so what's that, that look like? Yeah, half an inch. I could change notation for my labels there. And uh, how many times longer? By which by what? That would be giving me a shorter or a less than one value, right? One and two sevenths. Wait a minute. So is it nine fourths or is it sevenths? Okay. Cancel out nine sevenths. Uh, which, what is that as a decimal? Okay. All right. So, yeah, it's uh, like. All right. Makes sense. Uh, did the book end up asking for a mixed number value there? Or was that just you guys' preference? All right, I didn't know, yeah. Uh, so let's see, uh, let's just focus on this one here. So what was the um, this uh, postulate that we talked about yesterday? Ruler postulate was one, and then wasn't there also about segments and addition? I think the segment addition postulate was one of them. So because uh, Q is between P and R, I think I could say something to the effect of, uh, let's say PQ plus QR is going to equal what? PR. All right. And then if I substitute the values for this, so there's PR, so I could plug that in for this, and there is PQ, so I'd plug that in for that, and then we'll solve Right, plug in what I know, solve for what I don't. That's classic algebra right there, friends. Uh, so 8y plus 5 plus qr. And we'll have to realize that this represents one number. That's not q times r. Like those were two separate variables in algebra, sort of algebraic equation. And 13y, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, it just says write an expression. This expression is going to be in terms of y, isn't it? Okay, yeah, I was going to say, I've got too many variables to be able to solve for what one of them is precisely. Uh, so to solve this, I, I'd want to get QR by itself, so I kind of want to get rid of this 8Y and this 5. Uh, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides of the equation, right? Subtraction property of equality. I'll tell you what, 
you guys already took an algebra one class let's do two steps at once i'll also subtract eight y from both you guys could do that right so that shortcut ish i don't allow my algebra kit so i get qr is equal to five y plus 20. Hmm? Hmm. Is that all i got no here we go here's the problem i didn't show you how to do so if i want to uh construct a copy of a segment um let's see it was different than the online one wasn't it i think i assigned it but they asked for a sequence of how to do it yeah so that's the difference between online and physical is sometimes what they ask you to do will be a little bit different let's see i think we go i'm gonna show some document camera work i'm gonna show this to you two different ways uh so if you still have your physical copy you can grab that follow along and oh man i'm gonna run out of space for that so here we go aha here we are so i've got this prove contrast i've got uh my compass straight edge protractor tool and is red here so if i want to uh duplicate this segment you might just be like oh well can i just measure it and and then like make a new line segment of the same length arguably yes yeah yeah but uh but classic geometry tools would have been to construct things using a protractor or no a compass and a straight edge sorry so so the first thing i'm going to do is uh i'm going to draw a new ray i guess is probably what i would need and it doesn't even have to be like parallel to that so i'm just going to draw a ray that's longer than it okay so here we go I'm, I'm drawing right over it there we go that's fine and and what i'm going to do is with this i'm going to line up right in the crosshairs there spinner part all right not as cool as fidget spinners were back in early 2017 but fine and now with this uh, slider, so I'm pushing down this button here, I'm going to slide it until it lines up with the end point of the original segment. And notice if I was to do that, you can see I create an arc. All right. Now the benefit of an arc, uh, or if I continue an arc all the way around, here's spoiler alert, uh, the definition of a circle is that it's the set of all points equidistant from the center. Okay, so every point on this arc, which is part of a circle, is the same distance from this here uh, as the original segment. You guys believe that? So right, if I drew other, other segments here, all of those would be the same length. So what I can do is now on my ray, line up this without changing the length of the, uh, the compass, and I'm going to swipe this arc like so and what that does is intersects a point on my ray which is very obvious and now the distance between these two points is the same as the original and these two segments are in fact congruent. all right nothing too fancy but it's it's just using the idea of kind of a radius uh to be able to construct congruent things now um some of the time I'll be uh, doing this on my, you know, writing tablet, and I'll show you how I do it on this. But I just wanted to show you physically so that when I do this on my writing tablet, that it correlates to what uh, you guys are doing there. So here's my ray. Okay, bop bop. Those are not parallel. I did that intentionally. And then I would need a a compass tool, which a compass generates what shape? Lots of circles and arcs. Yeah, so check this out. So I've got this circle tool here, an ellipse that's a 90 degree ellipse circle. Uh, and I can line that up there on one end point, which is what you would do. And then I change the size of this so that my arc intercepts the original end point. All right, which is the same thing we did in our physical universe moments ago. And so notice it measures out uh, values that are the same distance. So if I copy that arc onto my new ray i'm left with uh two endpoints intersection between the arc and this ray 
that will end up being the same as how convenient that my ruler left in this spot the same length as the original okay so so that's kind of how you end up doing it now that's not that amazing i copied a line segment but that's like one of our foundational skills that we'll end up having and be able to then later on in the course construct uh, congruent triangles or hexagons and all sorts of other things uh, as well. So that's kind of like you learned like a syllable sound or something like that. It's nothing going to be a building block. But anyways, that's that. Uh, thanks for watching. Mis amigos de Inter.